deal with. Oh, cool. Two people. I will look at it. I will look at it. Leslie, I'm just folks. I'm just checking the live stream right now to make sure that that works when we eventually do that later. Yep, it. that works. Totally works. Leslie, I'm just folks. I'm just checking the live stream right now to make sure that that works when we. Great. That test is done. Uh, that's going to go through. Uh, that's going to go through HowlRound's Vimeo, which will go to HowlRound. So. Great. And will we be able to get a recording to post for Facebook or one of our or what? Yes, our I will uh, make sure that this starts record. Uh, it should be set on automatic record already, but I will make sure that that happens uh, once we go once we open the house in about ten minutes. So yeah, well, we'll I, I'm done with my tech check. So if anybody, everybody's lighting looks great. You all look fabulous. Um, and uh, cool. And so I don't need to look fabulous since I'm not going to be in here. <laughs> so but you do. <laughs> <laughs> and yet I do. Um, okay. Uh, yeah. So I'm good. Thank you. Thanks, Ariel. Uh, I will look. I will also. Uh, the Q and A should also be uh, activated as well. So you'll be able to see questions in there. I will be looking at Facebook as well um, and seeing if any questions come in there. And if I do, uh, I, and I'll occasionally look at HowlRound too, although questions rarely come into there, and I will drop them into the Q&A as I see them. Drop in the Q&A. OK, great. great. And we're expecting one more NEA person, Eleanor Billington, um, okay. who's gonna be, is really the point person for the Q&A on our end. Um, and her whole job, she was just brought in for two months just to deal with uh, ARP stuff. So that's like her, her thing. She has, she has the expert answers that we don't know. Um, awesome. But just to keep an eye out for her because you may need to give her permissions to do video and stuff, Ariel. Yep, yep, yep. Absolutely. Um, and Leslie and Leonie, have you had a chance to meet my colleague Brandon? I, Brandon, I feel like I may have seen you on a different webinar or something. <laughs> you, you, you never know. <laughs> it's very possible. I feel like we've done. Yeah. Yeah. multiple guidelines webinars in the past but yeah. it's nice to meet you nice to meet you um, how do you say your last name gride right yeah okay forget which one of us is introducing everyone i think it's it's you leslie right all right i'll drop in the um the run of show that leslie gave us this morning into the chat as well hold on I'm going to put a little pronunciation. So Jennifer Chang, Christine Gant, or Gant? Gant? Uh, Christine's not joining. Oh, Christine's not. Okay, great. Good to know that little update. Uh, Brandon Gride, Greg Reiner, Ian Julian Williams. Hi, Ian. And then Ellen, uh, Eleanor Billington will join us hopefully soon here. Okay, beautiful. Um, oh, you're going to, you're, are you sharing the doc? Uh, all I got, I'm sorry, I don't think I got a doc. I did get an email. Oh, with the rundown? Yeah. yeah an email. That's all right. I will put it into a doc. And yeah. Then you know that points, Leilani and I, we have a script that we... Oh, there it is. Yes. I see it. All right. Let me um, I see it. So we'll, we'll work through those points. We'll open, introduce ourselves, mention uh, Caught to Confest. Um, I'll mention a bit about the Healing um, Over Hate series and um, uh, briefly say before we introduce your team, and then Leilani will do land acknowledgement. And uh, mahalo to Leilani for that. We'll come back and we'll introduce each of you. We'll use just your titles because then cause we want to leave as much time for the presentation as possible because I'm sure you all have incredible bios. So with all due yeah, respect, please don't read our bias. <laughs> Okay, great. Usually I'm happy with that too, but I, but thank you. I wanted to mention that. And then we'll give you a warm welcome for being with us and we'll just pass the baton on to you. The floor will be yours. And then um, I know uh, you'll indicate to us when it's time to transition and Leilani and I will uh, bring Eleanor back with us to lift up the chat, answer questions. And of course, if any of you can answer questions too, please do chime in. Um, and then as we get close to our 
90 minute mark. If there's a lot of questions, certainly we'll leave about five to seven minutes before the end of the session. That 90 minute mark to just come to a close, thank our funders, including the NEA. <laughs> and uh, then we'll be out with our final Mahalo Anui. Aloha. Yeah. Um, and do we want to control our own videos so that when we're not on, we'll just, we can yes. turn off our video. Yeah. And then when we're announced, then we'll turn our video on. That's a good idea. So that will, you all will be featured once we uh, introduce you. I, I mentioned your names and your um, titles. Um, then maybe turn okay. your video off. Yeah. And Leilani, you want our I'll videos be... off at the beginning then? Yeah. So we get to our part. Okay. Great. And when it comes time to the Q and A, uh, Leslie, will you be? Well, first of all, how many people do you think have, you, have registered? I do. You know, have any idea, Ariel? Who how many registered? I didn't track that. I'm not yes, sure. I did. Let me just go into Zoom. Find out. Wait one moment. That'll affect how I would question about hey, how we want to do the Q and A. If it's like ten people, we can always have a conversation. Let's see webinar. Uh, we know we get a lot of viewers when folks can't get away to watch. Yeah. A lot yeah. of viewers. I guess what I, well, what I'm thinking, so the last one I did, which was almost a thousand people, um, the host, this was with AFTA, just because it was impossible to keep up with the Q&A. So the host at that point just kind of like picked what she could. And a lot of them were the same question. Um, so try to, so is that the role that you would be doing, Leslie? Just saying to us, here's the question we want to ask. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. This is uh, there's considerably less than a thousand this time, but uh, <laughs> the, 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 there's 25 registered. But then there's always folks who watch on HowlRound and always folks who watch uh, specifically on on Facebook. So um, I'll have to sort of be, I'll run back and forth from those both those places and see. And that's actually there. not a bad number because um, when you think about it, our number of theaters isn't in the hundreds <laughs> but we've encouraged individual artists to to watch as well or to spread the word so just the the theaters they work with or eventually they may run something or be a part of something so we just know it's a good good education too yeah um theater mood who said that they wanted to come today but they have a, they have a staff meeting i think um so they can't make it but they asked if there, the recording would be available so um, and I said, yes, uh, it'll day. Great. Great. Let me just text Taya, make sure everything's cool. And just to um, chime in, thank you again for inviting me to this space. I'm very excited to be able to see everyone. I'm, I'm going to have to hop off at probably around 4.05 or so. So if I will not see you at the end of the... I don't think there's an after party equivalent of this. So, but um, I just wanted to take a, take the minute to to thank you all, and I hope that this is not not the only time I get to see you all. Thanks for being with us, Jen, and taking the time as well. It means a lot thank to have you. you here and all of you to speak directly with our community, our leaders. Yeah. This is social justice work to make this available. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Help us to be able to submit strong applications. Yeah. That's what we're hoping. It's a very small step, but we're we're trying to take as many of these small steps as, as possible right now. Great. Thank you. Hello. Um, great. I am all I'm all set, um, tech wise. I'm waiting to hear from Taya from HowlRound that she's pretty good about getting back to us quickly. So we should be all right. Um, if people want to take a short break before we go on, um, you have it. I'm going to turn on um, just the first oh. screen. Uh, Here's Eleanor. Oh, perfect. Okay. Hi, Eleanor. Hi, everybody. I'm sorry to be late. I was on the phone with a potential applicant. So thank you for your patience. I apologize about that. <laughs> How's <As> everybody? <laughs> Hi. <laughs> Thank you, Eleanor, for being with us. Um, I understand that you're our specialist, so um, we'll introduce folks, but also when, and, and when, when we do, feel free to turn your camera on then so folks can see you. And then um, 
when we transition to the Q and A, uh, Leilani and I'll be sure to, um, you know, kind of call you back up as uh, as our specialist. Yeah. That sounds great. Thank you. And you guys may have already discussed this. You all may have already talked about it, but do you have both your Q and A box open as well as the chat function for people? Okay. Okay, because that will just help me to try to navigate between the two in terms of questions. Yes. And I'll make sure that the chat is, um, should be, I'm going to make sure that everybody can use it. Uh, do you want me to leave it off during the um, presentation and then turn it on uh, for chat? Um, or or have it on the whole time? Here's a question. I know we're going to encourage folks to you know, type in uh, their land acknowledgement where they're zooming in from. Okay, so just make it, um, allow attendees to chat with everyone. Um, all right, great. Thank so you. that's already set up. And let me just make sure the Q&A is set up. And Eleanor, there, there's also questions coming out on Facebook that Ariel's gonna cut and paste, I think, into our chat for you. Okay. Maybe yeah, I'll that's be great. jumping back and forth. Great, thank you guys. And is someone gonna monitor the chat and sort of throw the questions out or do you guys want me to do that to the group? Um, did you already discuss that again? Sorry for being late. Uh, no, uh, I have not. Um, Leslie, what would you prefer? Oh, well, I'm happy to come back on, bring you back on Eleanor. Maybe together we can, if there's a lot in the Zoom by, we can kind of tag team. Sure. Yeah, great. Some of the questions I imagine you'll be able to answer directly. Yes, exactly. Hopefully. And, and it's good maybe that the chat is open to during this session, because if there's something that's easy and you all don't feel like it's a distraction, I'm happy to go ahead and just quickly answer someone's question, provide them a link, whatever would address them immediately. Because I know it's nice, you know, if you're waiting and waiting to have your question. That's awesome. Thank you. Sure thing. Awesome. Um, I'm sensing because Leilani and I uh, can tag team this way too. If you get offer some information, knowing our community, we may also add a little like question on to that for clarification or knowing the situation some of our folks come from, we may um, kind of ask something uh, connected. Yeah. Okay. Great. Great. And stop me too if you have clarification for me. If you think I'm not, if I'm not hearing something well or, or understanding, then please stop me and and. Uh, you know, hopefully we want people to, you know, we won't be asking them directly. So it's hard. You, know, you can't tell if someone's typing, if they're really getting it. Sometimes it's hard without that back and forth. I think, you know, when you're, when you're talking to someone in person. So please stop me if, if you have concerns or, or anything like that. Great. Thank you. Mahalo. Cool. Um, since it's supposed to start at 3.30, I'm just going to do a share screen um, and uh, go ahead and start live streaming. And right, then, so we should all go off camera, right? Yeah, go ahead and go off camera. I'm going to do it. Okay. Yeah. Leilani, do we stay on camera? No. Yes, but I, yeah, uh, go ahead and go off. Go ahead and go off because it's still like three minutes till you guys get a break. Um, okay. Okay. I'm just going to see service. Uh,
Wonderful. Aloha, everyone, and welcome to the Consortium of Asian American Theaters and Artists, Kata's Virtual Space, where we are in partnership with the wonderful HowlRound Theater Commons for this special summer episode of the Healing Over Hate series, where we are featuring the National Endowment for the Arts and the American Rescue Plan's Grants to Organizations program. I am Leslie Ishii, and I am honored to serve as Kata's board president. And aloha kako, my name is Leilani Chan, and I am currently serving as the co-chair for the 2022 Kata Conference and Fest uh, National Asian American Theater Conference and Festival, Ku'u Aina, Ku'u Piko, Ku'u Pahua, Return to the Source. And today we are proud to host this information session with representatives from the National Endowment for the Arts, speaking on the American Rescue Plan. Kata's series, Healing Over Hate, exemplifies our commitment to work in service of our AAPI Native Indigenous artists and theaters. And this includes organizing efforts in coalition with our colleagues, our BIPOC uh, artists and BIPOC theaters of color to work towards our collective thriveability. We believe this is a matter of social justice to end the false notion that artists should starve to do their work and have a career and to counter the effects of systemic racism and anti-Asian Pacific Islander, native indigenous hate and violence pre-COVID and as you know, as it has uh, grossly escalated during this global pandemic. And in a moment, we will introduce our esteemed uh, NEA team that will help us to be educated when submitting these grant applications to survive and thrive as we hopefully come out of this COVID-19 pandemic sooner than later. And before we do, let us invite you to offer where you are tuning in from. Uh, let's take a moment to reflect for ourselves where we are individually. And if you would like to put the names of the tribes, bands, and peoples who are the stewards of the land you are currently on, please do so now in the chat. If you do not know, but would like to research for the future who the indigenous peoples are of the land you are in. Um, Ariel will be, Ariel, our esteemed uh, Kata staff member, communications manager, and all things, uh, all things live internet Zoom is here, is Ariel. Um, and uh, Ariel, if you could put the link to uh, the native land acknowledgements in the chat, that would be great. Um, I right now am calling from uh, the calling from the land of the Kanaka Maoli in Hawaii. I am in the Ahakua of Nuuanu, looking out over the Pali uh, Freeway and Punch Bowl um, in Honolulu, Hawaii. And as you are ta typing in your land acknowledgement in the chat, it is part of our practice, and it may be part of yours, to take a moment to acknowledge the respective lands we are gathered on and the native and indigenous peoples past and present who are the stewards of these lands. We feel it is important to acknowledge the history of how what we call the United States was created and to name that the oppression and violence experienced by people today is rooted in that history. So we challenge ourselves not only to name the peoples, the lands and history, but also ask how are we naming this history in our daily work? How are we developing deep relationships with the native peoples where we live and work? And how are we shifting practices that push against racist policies and ways of being we have inherited and continue to perpetuate? Let's continue to reflect and learn in order to create action steps in service of social justice today and beyond. Mahalo Anu. Mm, mahalo Leilani. And mahalo to all of you for tuning in for this special Healing Over Hate episode. Again, the American Rescue Plan's Grants to Organizations program, um, where we get to learn from these dear colleagues. So now it is my honor and pleasure to introduce our esteemed representatives from the National Endowment for the Arts, who will guide us through this session. Uh, so I'd like to welcome Jennifer Chang, the White House Liaison and Senior Advisor to the Chief of Staff. Hello, Jen. Uh, Brandon Gride, Director of Presenting and Multidisciplinary Works and Artist Communities. Hi, Brandon. And dear Greg Reiner, Theater and Musical Theater Director of the Performing Arts Division. Hi, welcome, Greg. And uh, Ian Julian Williams, Theater and Musical Theater Specialist. 
Hi, Ian Julian. And Eleanor Billington, American uh, Rescue Plan Specialist. And Eleanor will be supporting with the chat and the Q&A as we, when we eventually transition to that section, that uh, section of the program. So please give a warm virtual welcome to our guests. Mahalo Anui for being with us. Uh, Leilani and I will also support in monitoring the chat as I know, um, again, we will have questions uh, in due time here. So to those tuning in, again, we welcome you and invite you to track your questions um, because our, like I said, our presenters will um, get to those uh, once they um, share their presentation. And uh, with that, to our NEA guests, the floor is yours. Thank you so much for being with. Mahalo Anui. <laughs> Thank you so much, Leslie. The warm welcome. Um, as Leslie mentioned, my name is Jen Chang. I use she, her pronouns, and I'm the White House liaison and senior advisor to the chief of staff here at the National Endowment for the Arts. Um, by way of visual description, my grandparents are from mainland China on one side and China by way of Hawaii on the other hand, on the other side. I have dark brown hair, dark brown eyes, and I am about five foot one. Um, and I just really wanted to thank our esteemed partners at CASA and HowlRound, um, especially Leslie, Leilani, Ariel, Kahai, and others, many others who did so much work to make this particular gathering a reality and have been supporting the field, especially the AANHPI community every single day during this unprecedented time. In particular, this the gathering that we're a part of right now as, as part of the Healing Over Hate series is just, such a strong example of the work that is so important that's happening at this time. I think for me personally, the combination of providing a space for discussion, reflection, along with productive steps to take, as well as centering the arts for healing is absolutely critical now, now more than ever. So thank you very much to all of our hosts. And, and thank you to my colleagues at the NEA from whom you'll hear many, many more detailed um, detailed descriptions than what I'm about to give, but they are extremely, uh, in my six months here, I've, I've come to learn how dedicated civil servants they are, each and every one of them, and, and thank you very much again to them. So before I pass the mic to them, I wanted to briefly speak about we're hoping, what we're hoping to discuss and accomplish today. The goal is not only to provide a deep dive into the American Rescue Plan funding opportunity, but in broader strokes to demystify the National Endowment for the Arts and our ad application process overall. We would love it if you left this meeting knowing that an NEA grant is within your reach, um, that you have the technical assistance tools you need um, for now, as well as the contacts and the direct line to each one of us um, to help you continue the dialogue. So if we could go to the next slide. And just a little bit of, of detail about how we got here. Um, in addition to our regular annual grants program, as part of the American Rescue Plan, the NEA will distribute $135 million. Um, there are two overarching goals for this funding stream. One of them first is to, to distribute relief to the field. Um, and the second, uh, by no means second in priority, is to expand access to federal funds for communities that have traditionally been underserved by the government. Of the 135 million, about 40% have been allocated to state and regional arts organizations for regranting through their own programs. Um, so we'll distribute the remaining 60% to arts organizations and local arts agencies. So that's the part that we're gonna be speaking about mostly today. Funding will be available for general operating support and guidelines are already available on our website. If you could go to the next slide. Wearing my um, at my hat as a representation representative from the Biden Harris administration, one of the biggest priorities of this administration is advancing equity and access for everyone, especially in this moment when we are trying to help organizations rebuild and recover from economic devastation. You'll hear a lot more detail as I mentioned, but just a couple of things that we've been thinking about as we've as we've been examining every part of the grant making life cycle. First. I just really wanna reiterate that we wanna welcome organizations who haven't previously seen the NEA as a resource alongside our seasoned grantees of all sizes. We recognize the process for applying for grants is an investment um, and we thank you for even taking the time to learn to join this call to learn more. Um, we would love for you to think of this as the beginning of a conversation 
if for some reason you don't, you leave this call and you think this opportunity is not, doesn't make sense for you right now, um, we'd love to be in touch with you for future, for future opportunities. We also know that the NEA is only one of a constellation of federal funding opportunities. And so we'd encourage you to look at local, state, and regional opportunities that, that I mentioned before. And we, to that point, we know that the need in the field for everyone on this call is great. So this is a, a both and strategy. There's no limitation to the, the different opportunities that you can, that you can go for. If you look at the next slide. Um, so this is basically the same information brought down from the theoretical, hopefully into a little bit more of how it might apply for you and to other arts organizations. And we're hoping to really make this as accessible as possible um, to those who are new to the agency um, and also to lay the groundwork for a conversation that, that we can build upon in the future. And I think I have one more slide. Um, just to put a finer point on the we're here to help um, message. My, my colleagues are kindly hosting bi-weekly Zoom Q&A sessions in addition to staffing uh, several different mailing lists um, that will get answers to all of your questions as you, as you get into this application process. Um, the other thing is I know that, again, it's, it's a huge time investment to be able to even start thinking about applying to this. Um, and as you, as, as you start looking, I just want to stress that no part of this is meant to be a gotcha question. No, man, no part of it is meant to be punitive. So if you find yourself stumped or, or overwhelmed or just want to check in and listen to what other folks are going through, I think um, these first this session is going to answer a lot of questions um, and would love to see you again at any of our upcoming Q&As. So with that, I am very excited again to see all of you. And I will pass it over to my colleagues. Thank you. Thank you, Jen. And hello, everyone. So happy to be here. Uh, I'm Greg Reiner, the director of theater and musical theater here at the National Endowment for the Arts. Uh, I uh, you see him pronouns, visual description. I have uh, black, I think I have good enough lighting. It doesn't look rain here today. Um, wearing a very coveted black NEA National Endowment for the Arts t-shirt. Uh, with a blank background mostly behind me and the plant because I'm told that you know plants are very important for using backgrounds. Um, so I'm really excited to talk you through some things here today uh, about the American Rescue Plan grants to organizations and programs. Um, again, we're thrilled that you could join us, especially as Jen said, want to welcome anyone who's thinking about applying for a grant to the NEA for the first time. There's going to be lots of times for questions after the presentations. So you'll type any questions into the Q&A area at the bottom of your screen. We'll get through as many as possible. And we'll also share our contact information at the end of today's presentation. And this webinar will be archived um, on, I believe, the HowlRound website and also via, you'll get to via the Cata website. So if you only remember one thing from this webinar, we hope it's this. We understand that applying for federal funding and managing a grant can be a significant undertaking. And we strive to ensure that all applicants receive the support they need throughout the process. And we really welcome the opportunity to connect directly with you. Next slide. The National Endowment for the Arts is an independent federal, oh, excuse me, I think I had to advance too quick. So uh, pardon me for that, but um, I will just continue with saying the National Endowment for the Arts is an independent federal agency. We provide funding for the arts in all 50 states, DC and US territories. Each year, we award thousands of grants to provide all Americans with diverse opportunities for arts participation. Check out the grant section of our website, arts.gov, for a listing of our regular grant programs, and don't hesitate to reach out with any questions. We encourage you to learn about uh, these grant, grant programs in addition to what we're going to talk about today, and we look forward to supporting you throughout the process. And now we'll go to the next slide. Um, thank you. The American Rescue Plan is designed to fuel the nation's economic recovery from devastating economic and health effects of the COVID-19 pandemic. Funds allocated to the NEA in its historic legislation represent a significant commitment to the arts and a recognition of the value of the arts and culture sector to the nation's economy and recovery. Next slide. Rescue plan funding is available through two separate competitive opportunities, grants to organizations, which we'll talk about today, and grants to local arts agencies for subgrants. A special note to any local arts agencies tuning in if you're here, uh, if you meet the eligibility requirements, you may apply to the Grants for Organizations Program for general operating support or to the Grants for Local Arts Agencies for subgranting, but not both. Next slide. 
The Grants to Organizations program will be carried out through one-time grants to eligible organizations to support their own operations. Unlike other NEA funding programs that offer project-based support, rescue plan funds are intended to support day-to-day -day business expenses or operating costs and are not specific program opportunities. Next slide. Applicants must be nonprofit tax exempt 501c3 US organizations, units of state or local governments, or federally recognized tribal communities or tribes. Applicants may include, but are not limited to, arts organizations, local arts agencies, arts service organizations, and other eligible organizations. We do not fund direct grants to individuals. The applicant organization must have completed a three year history of arts programming prior to August 12, 2021. And for the purpose of defining eligibility, three-year history refers to when an organization began its programming and not when it received or re, re, not when it incorporated or received nonprofit tax exempt status. Programming is not required to have taken place during consecutive years. If your programming has just been disrupted due to COVID, there are flexibilities described in the guideline. So don't get hung up if you had to suspend your programming over the last year. You, you were probably still eligible. Uh, applicants must be up to date with reporting requirements for any previous NDA grant. Uh, so if you owe us for overdue reports, make sure you get on that immediately. Next slide. We are committed to diversity, equity, inclusion, and fostering mutual respect for diverse beliefs and values. We intend to make awards that will impact a broad constituency. We encourage applications from a variety of eligible organizations, including organizations that serve populations that are underserved, such as those whose opportunities to experience the arts are limited by ethnicity, economics, geography, or disability, organizations with small and medium-sized budgets, organizations from rural and urban communities, and organizations that may be applying for federal support through the NEA for the first time. And with that, I will turn it over to Brandon. Thank you, Greg. Uh, hello, everyone. So I'll just pick up from where you left off. Uh, organizations may submit only one application to this program. The exceptions to the one application rule are made only for parent organizations applying on behalf of one or more separately identifiable and independent components. Eligible organizations that received CARES Act funding from the NEA may apply to this program as long as there are no overlapping costs during the same grant period. Eligible local arts agencies may either apply to the rescue plans grants to local arts agencies for a subgranting program or to this program for general operating support. You may apply to other NEA funding opportunities for which your organization is eligible, including grants for arts projects. In each case, the applications cannot have any overlapping uh, any overlap in costs during the same grant period. And next slide, please. You may request a grant amount for $50,000, $100,000, or $150,000. Applications will be reviewed and considered for recommendation only at one of these requested amounts. Cost share or matching funds are not required. We encourage you to select a grant amount that is reflective of your organization's size and internal capacity. Applications will be reviewed and considered for recommendation at the requested amount only. Whichever amount you choose, keep in mind the review criteria when crafting your application to make the best case. Your application will be evaluated based on the capacity of your organization to carry out the proposal. A grant period of up to two years is allowed, and it may start no earlier than January 1st, 2022. And next slide. Yeah, thank you. Rescue plan funds are intended to support day-to-day -day business expenses or operating costs and not specific programmatic activities. Please read the guidelines carefully for details about what costs we can support. Support is limited to any or all of the following. Salary support, full or partial for one or more of the staff, for one or more staff positions. Rescue plan funds may be used to support existing jobs, new jobs, or to restore jobs that were fur furloughed or eliminated due to the pandemic. Fees and stipends for artists and or contractual personnel to support the services they provide for specific activities as part of organizational operations. Artists fees and stipends should be related to work with a tangible outcome, such as performances, presentations, workshops, and or the creation of artwork. Facilities costs, such as mortgage, principal, rent, and utilities. Costs associated, associated with health and safety supplies for staff and or visitors and audiences such as personal protective equipment, cleaning supplies, 
hand sanitizers, et cetera, and marketing and promotion costs. One type of cost isn't preferred over another. It's up to your organization to choose why which costs to include, uh, to, to choose which costs to include in the budget and to make the case in the application as to why they are important in relation to the review criteria. Think about where the funds may make the most impact for your organization or fill a gap that is not currently being funded through other sources. Uh, next slide, please. All applications are reviewed by advisory panels made up of diverse groups of citizens from around the country. Panelists will consider the review criteria of artistic excellence and artistic merit, including the proposal significance to the mission and core work of the organization, the ability to carry out the award as shown by the alignment of the budget and other resources with the goals and requirements of the ARP funding opportunity. As appropriate, the potential to have an immediate impact on the arts workforce, and as appropriate, the potential to serve and or reach individuals whose opportunities to experience the arts are limited by ethnicity, economics, geography, or disability. Panel recommendations are shared with the National Council on the Arts, which then makes recommendations to the Arts Endowment's chairman. The chairman reviews the council's recommendation and makes the final decision on all grant awards. And then we can continue just uh, staying on this slide here. So submitting an application is a multi-step process. For part one, you will submit to grants.gov the application for federal domestic assistance uh, short organization form. This is a brief form that will collect very basic information about your organization. For part two, you will fill out the grant application form in the NEA's applicant portal. This web form is where you will enter the majority of your application materials, such as the proposal description and budget information. Grants.gov and the NEA's applicant portal are two separate online systems. Uh, and the next slide, please. So in order to use grants.gov, you must first obtain a DUNS number from Dun & Bradstreet and then register with the System for Award Management, also known as SAM.gov. If you are a first time applicant, start this process now. Allow at least two weeks for your SAM.gov registration or renewal. You'll also need to ensure that your organization is registered with grants.gov. As a reminder, SAM.gov and grants.gov are federal government systems and registration in both systems is always free. The guidelines on our website have links to these sites, as well as links to video tutorials to help you get started. NEA staff does not have internal access to SAM or grants.gov, so if you run into technical difficulties with either entity, you should reach out to them directly via telephone or email. And now I'm gonna turn it over to Ian. Wonderful, thank you, Brandon. Um, again, folks, my name is Ian Williams. I'm a theater and musical theater specialist here at the Arts Endowment. I use he, him pronouns, and by way of a visual description, I am a black and Asian mixed race man with short curly hair. I'm wearing a blue button down shirt, and I'm in a room with some artwork behind me and some plants as well. Going on with the presentation. Because we anticipate a large number of applications for this funding opportunity, applications will be submitted in two separate groups, one for organizations with legal names beginning with A through L, versus one for organizations with legal names beginning with M through Z. The different submission windows will not affect the timing of grant review or your organization's ability to receive a grant. To determine which group applies to you, use your organization's legal name as it appears on the current IRS 501c3 status letter or in the official document that identifies your organization as a unit of state or local government or as a federally recognized tribal community. Do not use your organization's popular name if it's different than that name. <clears throat> if you are unsure which group to select, read the guidelines for some helpful tips or contact us. And we'll stay on this slide, please. Both the A through L group and the M through Z group will have the same part one grants.gov deadline, which is August 12th of this year. However, the part two deadline for the A through L group and the M through Z group will be different. Group A through L, part two of the application submitted through the applicant portal, the applicant portal will be open on August 19th. The deadline to submit part two is August 25th at 11.59 p.m. Eastern time for group A through L. For group M through Z, the applicant portal will open on August 27th. 
The deadline to submit part two is September 2nd at 1159 p.m. Eastern time for group M through Z. Again, please contact us if you are unsure which group to select. Next slide, please. The American Rescue Plan grant opportunity guidelines are available on our website at arts.gov. To locate the guidelines, click the menu button at the top right of our homepage. It will be an icon with three horizontal bars and then click on grants. Next slide, please. Next, scroll down to the American Rescue Plan grants under the heading grants for organizations. Next slide, please. And then select American Rescue Plan grants to organizations in the list of options on the left-hand side of the screen. Next slide, please. Carefully read the program description. I also encourage everyone to review the other links on the left side of the page for information such as eligibility requirements and application deadlines. If you need to reach us, click on contacts. Next slide, please. To access the application instructions, go to the how to apply page. Part one instructions will walk you through how to submit to grants.gov. Next slide. Part two instructions will walk you through how to submit to the NEA's applicant portal. Click on the link to the part two PDF instructions. Even though you won't have access to the applicant portal until the dates we mentioned uh, before each group, all the application questions are available now in this PDF so you can prepare your application early. The PDF includes instructions for accessing the applicant portal and how to access and retrieve your agency tracking number, which will be used as a password to access the portal. Next slide, please. We encourage you to go to the applicant's applicant resources area in the guidelines. Technical assistance includes frequently asked questions, an applicant checklist, a summary of common application mistakes, a grant application form tutorial, grants.gov and sam.gov resources, instructional videos, signups for live applicant question and answer sessions with our staff and many other items. Please check them out. Next slide, please. The frequently asked questions section on our website covers a lot of ground. We wanna highlight a few questions um, from this section. Number one, can I apply to the American Rescue Plan if I have applied for other arts endowment grants this year or other federal relief funds such as the Shuttered Venue Operators Grant or the Paycheck Protection Program? And the answer is yes, you can. However, as Brandon mentioned before, it's important to remember that you cannot use multiple federal grants to fund the same activities or costs. Each grant should cover something different and fund something different. Additionally, you can't use American Rescue Plan or other federal funds in order to meet the matching requirement of other arts endowment grants programs, such as the Grants for Arts Projects program. Next question, are work samples required for the American Rescue Plan applications? Answer, no. You will not be required to upload work samples or submit other materials. Another question, rescue plan funds are for specific general operating costs only. What is the difference between a project-based grant and a general operating grant? And the answer is, while rescue plan funds may support work that goes into programmatic activities, these grants are not project-based. In a project-based grant, all of the costs must relate to the execution of a specific project. In operations-based grant grants, eligible costs are not tied to a specific project. For example, you may include staff salaries for your Pura total team, your team that curates, um, as well as artist fees and stipends for teaching artists in your education department, even if these people will not be working together on the same activities. Similarly, fees, stipends for artists and other contracted personnel must support the activities uh, and services they provide uh, as part of the organization's operations. Next slide, please. Before we get to your questions, here are a few things to remember. If you aren't registered with DUNS, SAMS, or grant, SAM, or grant.gov, get started now. Late applications are not accepted. Be sure that your application is complete and submitted on time. Submit part one well in advance of the August 12th deadline to give yourself ample time to resolve any issues. Likewise, submit all of your part two materials to the applicant portal well in advance of the deadline. The hours of heaviest use are generally 8 p.m. to 11.59 p.m. Eastern time on the day of the deadline. So we recommend avoid using the system at that time if possible. Each year, there are applicants that wait to the last minute and unfortunately, they run out of time. Next slide, please. And then finally, uh, we wanna to get to your questions. 
So enter them into the Q&A area at the bottom of your screen. Um, if we don't get to your question, be sure to reach out to us directly. Our contact information is available right now on your screen, and the guidelines are also available at arts.gov. Oh, thank you, Ian, Jillian. Thank you, Greg. And I think, I know Jen uh, was maybe going to need to roll off before the end of our session. So thank you to Jennifer Chang and Brandon. And uh, now I'd also love to invite Eleanor to the screen. And Leilani, when you get a chance, come on back. Um, we'd love to field any questions, any thoughts, observations you might have or clarification you might need. Yes, Eleanor, shall I pass the baton to you? Sure, thank you so much, Leslie. Um, just hello again to everyone. My name is Eleanor and I am working as a specialist for grants management on the American Rescue Plan. I am a white woman, I'm wearing a blue top. I have long brown hair and I'm sitting in front of an, an uninteresting white wall. I'm sorry, there's nothing behind me. Um, but it is the furthest place from my children. So it is nice and quiet so that I can spend all my attention on you all um, to answer your questions. And I just wanna say before I, I begin that I am here to help. Um, I will be the individual who is manning the phone lines and also the general inbox for the American Rescue Plan. So please, um, I'm glad to connect with you all this way. Know that there's a human on the other end of, of that contact information when you have questions. So I will go ahead and also drop our general American Rescue Plan contact information into the chat so that everybody can see it. Um, just in case, like Leslie said, if something isn't answered here, we will definitely follow up with you and you can um, also reach out directly to us. So I will do that now and then begin to take questions. Beautiful. And we do encourage you to reach out. Please don't be in isolation about this or even have a buddy that you're working on your applications together. You know, um, keep each other going. Please do reach out. Um, Eleanor, I do see a question from Amber. Mm -hmm. Size budgets are accepted. It said small to medium. What does that mean exactly? That's a great question. And we've had a lot of people ask us, you know, what, is there a budget threshold? Um, what do you mean by small? What do you mean by medium? And I don't have a direct answer for that because we don't want to prescribe what a small or medium sized budget is. We know that that really differs depending on the organization um, and where you are located. And so we want to be respectful of that and also give you the opportunity to request an amount that you think is um, the most effective for your organization based on your overall operating budget. And you'll have a chance to tell us why you selected the amount you did in the proposal narrative. So you'll have the opportunity to say, here's why we need this particular money for artist fees or for staff salary. So you'll have a chance to, to tell us why and also to tell us how your request um, relates to the capacity of your organization to manage the grant because one of the criteria is organizational capacity, um, staff members who would be available uh, to work on the project and, and that sort of thing. So it's something to keep in mind. Um, so we don't have a, a threshold, there's not a budget amount that would um, make you uh, unacceptable, you know, uh, um, ineligible or, or kicked out or anything like that. And if you want to ask us specifically, please reach out to me via email or phone and I'll get back to you if you wanna have a more detailed conversation. Leslie, yes. Beautiful, thank you. Oh, I just want to share, folks, if you're looking for me on your screen, too, I have dark black hair, short, flips up a little at my shoulder length, and I'm wearing a kind of a dusty pink sweater. And I'm in front of um, uh, some mountains and beautiful water on Clink and Ani. Uh, with that, Eleanor, or maybe Greg, I know you have an answer. This is a critical question for us, actually, as uh, folks of color, Black, Indigenous, um, because often with grants, because of our size, we're only allowed to apply for a certain amount. Sometimes foundational or governmental grants are based on the size of our operating budget. And it actually keeps us very poor because we don't quite get enough to really recover, even in pre-COVID days. <laughs> so um, do you have any thoughts on that? And Greg, I think you may have had something more to add as well. I, I will add to something and then, and then dovetail into what you were saying, because I think it's super important, Leslie, um, just to make sure there's no, because sometimes that question about the budget size is the way we have expressed it 
In our FAQ, people interpret that to mean we only accept small to medium sized budgets, and that's not true. You can be any size budget when you apply. The reason we're calling that out is because often, as you said, look, folks with smaller or medium sized budgets don't know if they're eligible. They think they might be too small, and there's no such thing, particularly in this case because it's not matching funds. Um, so, to your other point, Leslie, I would say, and, and this is part of the thinking of why we didn't say you could only apply for X amount if your budget is X amount and we're letting you all choose the amount was exactly what you're talking about to, to be more equitable. And uh, so I would say, I would, I would encourage you if you are, say you're, uh, you're a small, and I'll just make up a number, and it's, this is not, by, it's just me making a number, a number for the sake of the conversation. Say your budget is $100,000 a year. Um, if you want to apply for $150,000 for this grant, you are eligible to do that. What I would encourage you to do is, is Talk about, and some of the things, language you even just used, Leslie, talk about why that amount is important to you and your recovery and rescue from this program. And I think you could probably make a compelling case for why that amount, why now, but make sure you address that. Um, and, and, and assure the panelists, you know, this, I don't know who the readers are gonna be. They're, they're, they will be selected from readers who have been panelists for us in the last three or three years, I believe. So for example, Leslie, you could be, eligible, though I'm not going to put anything more on your plate <laughs> if I don't have to, but I mean, and uh, so any, it, it's, so, but just to say it's folks that you will know from the field who have a, have an understanding of who you are, but I, uh, and I'm sorry to be rambling a bit, what I wanted to say was um, when you address that, uh, make sure you talk about your capacity to, because that can be a knee jerk, especially because we expect maybe 5,000 applications for 800 um, actual funds that we have dollars to give to. Um, so make, make sure you, you don't give a panelist any reason to disqualify you, right, or to, or to rank you down. Say, make, make sure you talk about how you do have the capacity, even though you might look small on paper. If that's the case, you can responsibly spend these taxpayer dollars. And I'll leave it at that. That's huge, Greg. Thank you so much. Uh, and I hope that that sticks for the duration, because that has been a very challenging issue for a long time now. So we're kind of breaking the mold with this. Fantastic. Well, let me quickly then start, sorry, and I'll, then I'll let someone else talk. But I think that's important too, because it, especially because we only have 800 of these grants or so, um, but we're hoping that people may, if they're new to the endowment, will apply for a regular grants for arts projects programming, which that deadline will be, the next deadline will be in February. So you got plenty of time to work through this, uh, figure it out and make sure you apply again for next time. Our normal grant program, again, there's no budget minimum or there's no budget minimum. Um, the grant size amounts are ten to $100,000. And again, we don't tell you that the catch is uh, in our normal legislation for our regular grants, you do have to match them. So if you get a $100,000 grant, you have to match that with $100 of funds, the $100,000 of funds that you've raised elsewhere. That's, that's the one little thing that can catch you if you're potentially a small organization. But we don't tell you what you can apply for as long as you can match it in the, in the regular program. Beautiful. Eleanor, I see there's some more questions here. Is it possible to provide us with phone numbers for the technical professionals for the SAM.gov and the grants.gov? Oh, I think that might have gotten answered then. Okay, it just went away. <laughs> and you're on mute, Eleanor. On mic, uh, turn your mic on. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Greg. Sorry. Thank you, Leslie. Um, yes, I just answered it while you were typing. So it does disappear from the Q&A, but I, um, I believe it was Christina who, who asked that question. So I sent, I sent the direct link for grants.gov, and I will also send the one for sam.gov, and I will also put those in the chat so that everyone can see them. I would recommend just having them handy as you're completing this first part of the application. And I, you know, it's a lot of federal acronyms and it can be really tough. So again, we've said it a lot, but please reach out to us if you have questions and we can direct you. If we can't help you, we will direct you to the people who, who are able to help you. Um, I believe there was a, another question too about applying for artist fees that go towards productions and workshops that are a part of core activities. And the question was, can, you know, do these funds support that work? And in short, the answer is yes, they do. You can use ARP funds to um, pay for artist fees that are doing, for artists who are doing ongoing work with your um, organization. And it may be ongoing work with a specific program and that's okay. I know there's some communication, confusion and, and communication um, issues, I think, around 
programmatic support and then operational support because this is different for, for the arts endowment. So those are very uh, great questions to continue to bring up. Um, please ask us. Um, we also had a question about fringe benefits too. And the question was, you know, if we're able to offer health uh, uh, insurance to our staff, is, is this eligible? Can we include that? And the answer is yes. Beautiful. Eleanor, I see another question. It says, my organization started unofficially mid-2018. We didn't incorporate until May 2019 and got a tax-exempt status in June 2019. You mentioned a three-year history of programming that could begin before receiving a tax-exempt status. In our case, could we count the work in 2018 or does it have to start from the time of incorporation only? This will determine if we meet the minimum three years work history. Thank you for the amazing work. Thank you for that comment. And yes, you can. So you can count the work in 2018. It's okay if that work happened before the incorporation. Uh, I see another, uh, another entry in the Q&A. Hi, Eleanor. Is it possible to get further assistance with this? I have been on the site at that link following the directions and unable to locate the form. I know this may be basic for some, but I have not been able to find it based off of the instructions. Yes, I can send you a direct link um, to the form itself. It will be found on grants.gov and that may be part of the confusion. So it is really confusing. We have arts.gov, right? And this is the National Endowment for the Arts website. This is where our guidelines are housed. This is where a lot of the things that my colleagues just discussed live. The applicant resources are at arts.gov. However, for part one of this application, you must apply through grants.gov. Grants.gov and arts.gov are different. Grants.gov is used by anyone who wants to apply to a federal entity for grant funding. So if you are applying to the National Endowment for the Humanities or Department of Ed or Department of Defense, you would have to use grants.gov. So that is, um, that is the first step in this process. And I, th I believe, I think maybe that the form you're looking for is there and there's a link to it from our website. So I can also send you that form directly. Um, Christina, please email me uh, at, the, at the numbers that we posted in the chat and I'll follow up with you directly. Thanks. Uh, everyone, please do offer more, uh, any, any confusion, clarification you'd like, any questions. I just wanna share too, um, for Kata, I worked with our dear treasurer, uh, Joan Osato, and um, I want to make sure everyone gets on your SAM, get your SAM number because it, it start that process because it does require a notary uh, to, to sign. So you might have to locate that person, meet them masked up or, you know, outdoors <laughs> to, to get that uh, taken care of. Um, anything you all want to mention on that? Because that's kind of that first important step as well. I can speak to that a little bit and please for my colleagues at the Arts Endowment jump in to um, please. Uh, it is, Leslie, it's a really great point. It can be a little bit of a longer process. So you may need to get a DUNS number and that's a pretty quick process. We have instructions for how to do that on our website. It can usually be obtained within the, the day that you log on uh, to their website to get it. But registering with SAM.gov can take a little bit longer. Um, and they do have a dedicated help desk. I will, I will post that information in the chat too. Um, they, the help desk is really wonderful. They have access to sort of the back end of SAM.gov, which arts endowment staff, we don't have that at the NEA. So they are, they are the experts, right? They're the place to go because they can look in and see things that we can't if there's an issue. Um, but if they're, if for any reason you're, it's not working or you're struggling or you just need like an emotional boost because sam.gov is difficult, which, which we get. I mean, it is really tough sometimes. Then please email us and say, look, we've been working on this. Is there anything else you recommend? Is there, you know, any encouragement you could provide or, you know, just um, to, to let us hear your feedback too, because yes, we don't control that website, but we do control a lot of our own guidelines and, and you know, we can, we can also shape how we provide technical support in the future. So your feedback is really helpful too. I don't, I don't know if others want to speak to SAM.gov. Well, um, Eleanor, I think that encouragement to reach out to either SAM.gov or grants.gov is really useful. Um, they're, uh, they're there to help. Um, 
And for those who are familiar with our website and um, wondering how do I get in contact with sam.gov and grants.gov, I know we shared that information in the chat, um, but if you're familiar with our website, it's in the how to apply section under step one, under part one. Um, and we have those contact numbers and even emails there for you to reach out to those two, two agency uh, or, or administrative ends of grants.gov and sam.gov, um, but call them. I think that's the best thing to do, um, especially now that the deadlines are coming up. Um, reach out to them directly. And as a grantee and a um, applicant, I want to just remind everyone, do it now. Don't wait to the deadline for the SAM application because I can't, even as a, a grantee in the past, um, the SAM does lapse um, and you don't want to get caught at the last minute assuming that you're up to date and then find out oops, I'm not, and then have to go through all the rigmarole. And I say that from experience. So please do it. <laughs> awesome. You know, thank you for offering um, a way to talk to somebody because we're online doing these things. And sometimes you just wish I had a human voice to talk with and have help me uh, walk through it or move through that process. So that's huge to get an actual person on the other line that helps the process. I see another question here. It says, we were founded in 2011, but only incorporated as a nonprofit and received tax exemption this year. We haven't fill, uh, filed a form nine. Yeah. Oh, sorry. We haven't filed a form 990 yet. We won't until August. Will the application require a form 990 audited financial statements to complete our application? No, so not not at this stage. So right now, you, what you will what you will need to have is that that status that you're incorporated. So the registration with with the IRS, um, that paperwork will need to be in place. And in order to register with Grants.gov and begin this process, you will need you'll need to have some of that paperwork in place. Also, Sam will ask you for some things in re in relationship to your status as a 501c3, as a nonprofit, um, but it, it will not, um, th those particular forms will not be required from the Arts Endowment. Does that, I hope that answers the question. Uh, there's another question in the chat. Uh, are organizations that are run primarily by volunteers eliminate an organization in terms of organizational capacity? So I think that is a question about if the organization is primarily run by volunteers, are they eligible? Yes, they are eligible. Please, um, uh, thank you so much for your interest in applying. Please, you know, reach out to us if you have other questions, but that is not a, it's not a problem. I don't know if others or Greg, anyone else wants to speak to that, but we've heard from a lot of individuals who are in that situation or, their organization was not run by volunteers uh, pre-COVID, and then due to everything that's happened over the last 18 months, it, it's the case now more and more where organizations are being entirely run by volunteers. I will dovetail a question I've gotten in another, other contexts about that volunteer, which is if you have gone back to volunteers, but you wanna bring people back to pay them, you can absolutely, right, Eleanor, use this money to bring back staff that you put on to full time or, you know, you put on a volunteer basis or furloughed um, and paying people is great. So yes, that's totally allowed. I wanted to ask a question that's not necessarily, it kind of dovetails on this. Um, many of the organizations of color, um, even pre-COVID, pre-pandemic, we're operating on a shoestring budget because we rely primarily on audiences that are low income, we don't have, subscribers or you know annual donors um, so many of our organizations were already underfunded understaffed semi-volunteer 100% volunteer is there and I know this is a big question but can the funding that is coming through this year is phenomenal at least for my organization theater productions and I know other organizations of color generally I have the feeling like this is the way it should always be <laughs> so is there any conversation about continuing funding um, organizations in this way beyond the crisis moment? That is a wonderful question. And thank you for, for speaking it and for um, letting it be in the space. I appreciate that a lot. I know I won't, you know, I know, I know my colleagues at the NEA do too. And I, um, I don't know. Uh, I don't know. And I don't know what other conversations have been going on at the Arts Endowment um, in regards to that. But 
I, again, I really, we, we appreciate it. I appreciate that feedback. I was taking some notes while you were talking. Um, and so thank you. And, and I know maybe um, Greg or Brandon may be able to speak to this more as directors. I'm not sure. I don't want to put anyone on the spot, but I, I do. Um, I'm not a part of, I'm doing a lot of technical assistance. So um, I'm on the ground a little bit more, but thank you, Leilani. Thank you. Sure, that's a great, that's a really great question. And uh, I'll just hop in here um, briefly. Um, so the, the um, lack, the non-matching requirement uh, for this grant was specially created for both CARES Act and the ARP funds. Um, and those were all congressional uh, decisions that were made through that legislation. Um, so unfortunately we don't have any information, probably no more information than you would have about any future uh, congressional activity around this. Um, however, as I think was mentioned earlier, so many of the practices that we have put in place for ARP to try and engage um, greater audiences, um, practices that we're trying to um, create uh, more equitable access to federal funding to the NEA, some of those practices and processes, we're trying to ensure that those continue through our regular funding um, uh, measurement, so through, our, through gap funding in our town and and research grants. So um, the good thing is we have we are taking some really strong steps to, to kind of change our own um, culture of, of, of being able to engage uh, potential applicants, even while we don't have necessarily a say in what Congress um, determines. So I hope it's not the, the, the best answer, but hopefully but kind of a, a half a half step there. <laughs> Thank you so much. I just want to answer that, ask that question because as I'm going to be filling out this application, some of the decisions I'm having to make right now is like, yeah, yeah, I get to fund this staff person who's been working half time or volunteer. Um, but my concern is if we expand and then don't have that money two years from now, I don't want to be laying people off. I want to be able to keep them. So that's why I offer, I, I ask that question. As long as the conversation has been begun. Absolutely. There are kind of, oh, sorry. Oh, please go ahead, Greg. I was going to say there's sort of two buckets in these conversations that we have. Of you know, there's things that are things that we can change as as both staff and uh, appointees, uh, and there's things that Congress has to change. So the matching is is by Congress. So that's that's really almost in your hands and not in our hands as people who talk to because we don't we we don't we're not allowed to have those conversations directly. But that's so that's not to put it back on you, but that's what people on the field, and that's why. This particular grant was not matching, but as Brandon said, there are a lot of things that we are learning and feedback we, that we can do. They're just policy. So those are, both things are super important conversations that we're having. Um, but again, it's the what stuff we can control. You know, what is the, whatever that mantra is, things you can change and things you can change. Absolutely, Greg. What I'm hearing and what came to me was it's up to us to get civically engaged and really press our Congress people, our elected officials, to con now that this pathway is getting carved, to keep it open and stay on them to say, we're the global majority, our populations are absolutely increasing and we are a workforce and you're employing us, let's help us stay employed and stay healthy so we can continue to grow and generate revenue as well, right? Um, yeah, cre create that, that beautiful synergy. Uh, for a healthy ecology. And to be clear, as a, I am not telling you, I'm just giving you the information. I'm not as a Fed to make sure I don't get in trouble telling you to do anything. <laughs> I'm just sharing information. No, I appreciate the clarity so we can pick up the ball and run. Thank you for that, Greg. And for all of you, we know we, as nonprofits, we cannot get behind a specific piece of legislation or the the election of an official, but we can state our needs, make them known and advocate for ourselves that way. Absolutely. Beautiful. Any other questions or comments? This is a great conversation, y'all. This is what we hope for. Yeah. Other clarity, uh, needed questions. Even if there's a little tiny thing, there's no, believe me, every question um, is important. Someone else might be thinking or asking themselves the same thing. While people may be thinking, Leslie, is it okay if I, if I say one more thing? So we have an applicant resource section on our website that is excellent. I know my colleagues have referenced it. I'll send you the direct link below too, but it has uh, several things depending on you, you know, how you sort of like to absorb information. There are some written FAQs there. There are several videos that NEA specialists have recorded that are really great for breaking down the different 
portions of the application and kind of walking you through it. Um, and you also get to see the staff, which I think is, um, you know, it, it can be good to, um, to have a, a bit more direct interaction. So I'll drop that link um, in the chat here too. I'll just make one, one more plug for the resource section. Thank you. <laughs> Now I'll also add, um, Leslie, you said it so wonderfully, um, sometimes it's good to talk to a person. Um, and I, I know I reference uh, callsam.gov, callgrants.gov, but you can also call us. Um, if you're on the website and you're having trouble locating something, I'm happy to walk people through. There are no small questions when it comes to these opportunities. So feel free to call us if you want to. And I'll also add on to that. And I think just, um, I think Greg might have said this earlier that even if, if ARP timing isn't the right timing for your organization to apply, this is great timing to begin thinking about the February deadline. Uh, and, and all of the specialists from each of the disciplines are, as, as Ian's mentioned, Ian Julian mentioned, that, that they're, everyone's ready to answer questions um, leading into the February leading into the February deadline. So keep that on your radar. I think that's a, another important date. Um, and we usually have new guidelines that come out in, I think, late November, early December. Um, so keep an eye out for that. And we revise those guidelines every year. So if there are things you think, whether we can change it or not, just share them with us because you know like in the early really the late winter as we all start as a team every year we look at see what can we change this year and next year is a big year for our guidelines because there's something called the paperwork reduction act boring government stuff but it's actually kind of interesting in a weird way <laughs> it just essentially means that our we can we can take a big dive into the guidelines every i think it's every three years or four years granted and then you might know the exact number anyways every certain amount of years we can really take a deep dive into making bigger changes and not just the cosmetic ones. Next year is that year. That's my point of sharing that. So don't be, you know, if anything you want to share with any of us, um, we will put it into the big master document for things to talk about. Um, and we're going to be starting on that, I think, in March. So get it in early if you've got things you want to change, even if, you know, whether we can or can't, we'll certainly consider it and talk about it. Beautiful. See, I'm just curious of the folks who are still able to be on with us, you can certainly do it anonymously in the Q&A or in the chat. How many have either won an NEA grant before, maybe you've applied but you haven't yet received one, or is this your first time applying? I'm just curious if you care to populate the chat or the q that. Um, yeah, just where, what, what's the experience of our community with, with the NEA? Sometimes Leilani and I know of other uh, AAPI theaters or orgs that might have won one, um, and certainly COTS has been able to apply and win one, or, or more than once actually. But um, I'm just curious as we advocate for our AAPI communities, how we can keep supporting you beyond today to get your sam.gov, your duns, or you know, how do we continue this work forward? I don't see any responses yet, but that's okay. <laughs> I wish we had it hand raised. Oh, we do. Do we have a raise hand function? Tian has received NEA funding, great. I know Perseverance Theater has, it's not a specific AAPI theater, but it's certainly becoming very inclusive. Um, yeah, I think a number of the theaters in the consortium have. Um, which brings up a question for me, you know, so many of uh, the smaller theater collective are not incorporated. Are they able to apply uh, with a fiscal receiver? I can speak a little bit to that. And unfortunately, no, not, not right now. Yeah. Um, fiscal agents or fiscal receivers not, uh, is not eligible. We are not allowed to accept those applications. I will say we've had several people ask that question though, and it's really good for us to hear and to note um, 
and and as Greg said, we revise the guidelines every year. So that kind of feedback is is good for us to hear. We have um, it's usually a one uh, organization, one application a year uh, limit, but there are some there are some exceptions. So you know, if people do have questions about the specific you know relationship they may have or the setup within a larger institution or um, or anything along those lines, they can reach out to us and we can you know, talk more directly about the, the particular instance. Great, thank you. Christina has offered something in the Q&A. Previous NEA grants had to make sure that all 50 states were funded. Given that larger states have larger populations and more organizations, New York and California tended to suffer. Will these rules apply to the ARP grants? I, if I'm, I can speak to that a little bit. I believe, if I'm understanding the question correctly, um, no. Um, you know, the the guidelines for this are um, artistic excellence and artistic merit for the individual panelists who are looking at the applications. And we have, I know my colleagues mentioned those criteria um, earlier, and we have um, some some explanation of what we mean by that on our website. Um, but as far as I'm aware, and I don't know if, if my uh, colleagues on the line can clarify, um, please correct me if, if um, you know differently, but there uh, is not um, that, that stipulation um, or requirement um, in this particular case. I know that, they, um, that the Arts Endowment you know, wants to see a um, wide and very diverse range of grants awarded in, in many regards, and I know geography is a part of that. Um, but I'm not aware of any any uh, more strict restrictions. <laughs> and there may be some confusion there. Just so, just to clarify, you know, because we often say we do fund or our organizations in all 50 states and U.S. territories. Um, that so that's not a, what that means is that we do. There is a project funded not not for ARP but for our regular grants. There is a project funded in every single congressional district. Um, that's not a, any kind of criteria. It's just that you know, through the course of a thousand plus grants that we make in a normal year, and I don't know what the exact number is, we do make sure that there is one in every congressional district. Um, but that doesn't. That's not a. That that's a yes and kind of scenario, which is a happy, a happy one for us that we actually get one of those <laughs> in a regular year to make sure that you know that everyone does get something in their district. Um, but that's not um, nobody. But that's not a. That's not a. You won't get it because someone else got it in a specific district. But regardless, I don't think that's any kind of criteria for ARP. That's helpful to know, Greg, is one got at them. I guess they've met their quota. We won't get any, you know, um, that's great to know that it doesn't work like that. And I really love knowing that the guidelines change. Uh, so it sounds like you're being responsive to communities and feedback. Yeah. I'll add something onto the question around the, the fiscal sponsorship as well, is that while um, for our traditional um, grants for arts projects grants, uh, a non-incorporated group uh, can also can partner with a primary applicant. So um, a primary applicant who is has does have a 501c3 uh, status can have a partner in their application process that can be contracted or, you know, um, uh, to serve as a as a as a partner within the project. Um, so just to also kind of share that, that while they can't apply, they can be connected to, to a, a, another project's primary applicant. And pardon me if you mentioned this throughout this kind of section of these questions. Does that mean fiscal sponsor or receiver or different? It's more incorporated as a partner into the programming, into being- Correct. Yeah, the primary, the primary applicant would have to be the, the leader of the project and actually uh, convening that project and implementing that project, but the but they can have partners that are unincorporated. And correct me if I'm saying that incorrectly. I just wanted to add a, added something different to, uh, maybe I'm hopefully not confusing people more. <laughs> but yes, the, the lead applicant does have to be the project leader. Uh, they're, not, they're not just serving there to, to facilitate a flow pass through of funds. Got it. Okay, beautiful. Um, and pardon me if I'm saying this incorrectly, Teatro uh, Circulo received a grant several years ago. Okay, so 
Christina has, uh, that theater has received a grant before. We hope you get one this time too, to support recovery. Great. Any other thoughts that you all have uh, or questions from, of course, our viewers? If we are winding down, I would say, you know, kind of word of encouragement and reality. Which I, yeah, the fact is, as we've said again, there is not nearly enough funds to support everyone who needs and deserves this opportunity. Um, so even as we encourage everyone to apply and more organizations to apply, and that in itself demonstrates the need, hopefully. Um, please don't be discouraged if you don't get it. You know, again, we try to make this much simpler than our normal applications for exactly part of that reason. We don't want to add more burden to people out in the field that are already struggling. But also, if you don't get it, don't be just, I mean, I hope you do get it. If you don't get it, please don't be discouraged or frustrated. Just talk to us. Make sure you get into the into the um, loop for next next year's grants. Um, know that we're here. We want everyone, you know, if we could hand it out to everybody, we would. <laughs> Um, but we still, I don't, I just don't want anyone to be discouraged knowing what the odds are, you know, and I'll reiterate in our normal for theater, and this is just for theater, I don't know about our other disciplines, Brandy, you can speak to your discipline. Um, we generally do fund about 60 to 65% of our applications. So know that if you apply for the regular transfer arts projects, your odds are much better. And again, we want to make sure you get funded, even, you know, uh, Christina over at Jeffrey Circulo, you know, please do apply again. Um, make sure you call for the, we don't do panel feedback for ARP just because there's thousands of applicants, but normally we do offer that as a service. So we want to talk to you, and this, I say from experience, when I was writing the grants for a small theater company at one time, and I called and got feedback and it was a successful grant the next year. And, you know, I wish I hadn't been so anxious or, or scared or intimidated to call in the first place because I probably could use the help sooner. So again, we're just all, you know, friendly people who really care deeply about the arts and want to succeed. So we're here to help you. And, uh, you know, and, and we just, we so urgently want and know how important it is for the arts field to recover for our artists, for our communities, um, and, you know, as part of healing the nation. Beautiful. Maybe we can move to a close if we don't have any other questions or comments in our chat or Q&A. Uh, I want to invite any of the other NEA guests, uh, Ian, Julian, Brandon, Eleanor, uh, any last thoughts you'd like to share? I love talking to people from the field. Again, I'm just going to say, call me, call us uh, with your questions um, because it's the beginning of a great relationship. Um, sometimes practice makes perfect um, and we want to be able to assist that and facilitate that in the way that we can. Um, but let's connect um, and let's uh, see each other succeed. I think Ian Julian said it best. I don't know if I have anything else to add to that. I think it's just, it's really, we, we are happy to be able to provide guidance and um, suggestions uh, as, as folks are um, looking to apply for, for grants. So again, I would just second him, reach out, to, reach out to the staff, reach out to the team. I agree. Thank you all so much for the opportunity to hear your questions, to respond, and to be um, with everyone today. I'm grateful for that, and I look forward to hearing from people. So please contact us. Yes. Beautiful. Thank you so much. I want to remind our viewers that in the uh, right lower corner of the chat, there's three little dots. You can save the chat so that that information that our dear colleagues here have put in the chat uh, if you haven't already um, somehow cut and paste it for yourself, you can save that chat and that information is there for you uh, to refer back to. It'll, it'll upload for you uh, once you close off the Zoom. Yes, and thank you for, oh, thank you for repeating that, Ellen. So it's right there. Um, beautiful. So I think, uh, shall we come to a close, Leilani? Um, mahalo, Anui to Jennifer, we know rolled off already, but um, Brandon, Greg, Ian, Julian, and Eleanor, thank you. Mahalo Anui for being with us. This was such an informative and important session. So our communities are, are educating themselves and have this chance to submit the strongest possible application for the grant. And um, Mahalo Anui for your support and the support, of course, our federal government so that we can um, survive and recover from this devastating 
global pandemic. So we say to our folks tuning in again, also mahalo, mahalo anui. Um, please do uh, refer to these resources by the NEA. It's great to hear your voices, put a voice uh, to the other end, end of a phone, um, also to have seen your faces uh, so that it feels very personal and humanized. It's not just transactional. Um, so please do use those resources that have been shared. Again, resist isolation, buddy up, help each other through. Us Kata folks are happy to do that with you as well. And um, let's get those grants, everyone. <laughs> with that, I'll pass it to you, Leilani, for, our, for your portion of the close. Oh, can you turn on your mic? I, yes, I double I double tapped. <laughs> um, I just wanted to say thank you again to um, those of you, our panelists here today for sharing and doing this workshop. Uh, we want to mahalo to our funders, which includes uh, the National Endowment for the Arts for two kata, the Consortium of Asian American Theaters and Artists. Um, and we also uh, are proud to be supported by the Doris Duke Charitable Foundation, the Ford Foundation, Theater Communications Group, the New England Foundation for the Arts. And we also wanna mention our partners uh, with HowlRound uh, Theater Commons, which has been helping support not only this workshop, uh, this webinar, but also our series that we've been doing over the last year plus, <laughs> the virtual series that we have now been doing as part of Kata to maintain our relationships. And of course, we want to thank very much our uh, Kata individual and organizational members and donors that make this work possible. Um, we want to invite everyone to plan to come to Hawaii in May 2022 for the Kata Confest, which is going to be amazing. And one of the main reasons we didn't just do a virtual a conference is because the point of Confest is to see each other and be together and also to share the incredible cultural history here in Hawaii and its relationship to theater and the Native Hawaiian and Pacific Islander theaters here, uh, which will be forming the base of our Confest in 2022. So it'll be unlike any other in the past. So please join us. And also um, go to the Kata website and become a member today. You'll get uh, advance notice of when um, we will be selling the past festival passes uh, and all other information that we can get. We send that to our members first and um, we look forward to seeing you in person. Go ahead, Leslie. Great, thank you. And of course, please, please, no amount too small, please donate your support. As Leilani was saying, makes it possible for Kata to, continu to continue its national leadership to raise our visibility throughout the theater field with programming like today that advocates for equity and justice and advocates for our community's health and well being through this Healing Over Hate series. We're fostering and advocating for our needs and our visibility in the field. And of course, like Lani mentioned, for the 2022 Kata Confest, make sure that that can happen. Um, so, again, our deepest gratitude to everyone who tuned in. And uh, you can find the session on our Facebook page, on the HowlRound uh, site as well. And please do spread the word to those who were unable to join us. That's the beauty of being able to record this. And of course, as Leilani mentioned too, I'll say again, don't hesitate to visit kata.net for updates. And we will resume this series this fall. Uh, I also want to say there is there are national committees that are advocating for our federal support to continue so keep uh, letting us know your feedback because I carry that uh, information representing all of you to those committees and to that national work so that we can come out of, the, out of this pandemic and truly recover and continue and build our communities. We are the global majority and therefore we have a lot of work to do to keep building, growing and to still be here. So thank you everybody for joining today. Stay safe if you haven't already. We encourage you to get vaccinated so we can get back to live theater. <laughs> Yay. Mahalo. Mahalo. Ahui ho. Mm -hmm. Mahalo.